What's up fellow gamers, it's your boy Put McGee here, and today I'm bringing you the second installment of my Rakdos Standard series, and this one is mid-range. Now if you didn't see the first video, of course you don't have to, but if you would like to, it should be appearing on the screen above me now. Um, go check that out, it was a good one, it was, it was a fun video, um, but what I'm doing here is just playing a bunch of different Rakdos decks and kind of showing different ways you can use the cards that are in Standard right now to make very, very different decks. Using a lot of the same cards actually, um, but we're doing different archetypes. Um, today it's mid-range, so we're going to be running slightly bigger creatures, but before I get into talking about the deck, um, let me remind you that if you enjoy this video at any time, go ahead and drop a like on it, it really helps me out, um, it gets more people to see it, and please comment with uh, what you want me to play next, comment suggestions, uh, pointing out mistakes that I make that I'm sure I'm going to make uh, during <laughs> these games, so you know, just, just do that, do that stuff. And without further ado, let's do this. Okay, so what what I think is the maybe not the best, but the most fun card in Rakdos right now is Judith the Scourge Diva. So we're running four of her. Um, she is a three drop two two that gives other creatures I control plus one plus zero. And whenever a non token creature I control dies, Judith the Scourge Diva deals one damage to any target. That's just good. It's good value. It's making all my other creatures stronger. And whenever my creatures die, including Judith. I deal damage to something. It could be a planeswalker, it could be a creature, could be straight to the face. Um, which, this is really fantastic against control decks, actually, um, because if they want to board wipe me, if it's getting towards the late game and they're trying to board wipe me, they really have to think twice about taking all the damage from all the creatures that are going to die when they do that. So this forces people to run cards like Cry of the Carnarium or wait for Subtle the Wreckages, and we can kind of play around that. So this gives us a huge advantage um, in those situations. Now we're also going to be running 4 Legion War Moss because this, again, is very good value. It's another 2-2 for 3, um, but this produces a 1-1 Goblin Creature token every combat step. Um, or on our turn, at the beginning of the combat step, it makes 1-1 and it forces, to, forces it to attack. Um, this is particularly good with Judith because that's a 2-1 attacking every turn, and then um, Legion War Moss is a 3-2 of course, and people are going to want to kill Legion War Moss and kill Judith, and we get damage out of that. So this is great value in the mid game. Uh, we're also running three Midnight Reapers because we need a little bit extra card draw, and this is another body to put on the field. Um, this does make it a, make us a little bit susceptible to uh, to burn decks like uh, Mono Red Aggro, particularly because this deals damage to us when creatures when our creatures die. Uh, but we just have to keep that in mind uh, if we're getting too low. Maybe we don't play the Midnight Reaper, uh, but usually in that situation we're probably just going to lose. Um, okay, we're also running, in the bigger side, we're running two Rekindling Phoenixes and two Spawn of Mayhems. We run, we could run four of one or four of the other, but I like to run a little bit of both because they do something very different for us. Rekindling Phoenix is a great defensive creature. Of course, it's a 4-3 flyer for four, which is really good, but it's a good blocker when uh, we're having trouble keeping creatures off the opponent's side. This is a big blocker every turn that brings itself back at the beginning of our turn and triggers when it dies um it triggers judith the scourge diva but then it comes back and then we can deal damage with that every turn so it's really fantastic um spawn of mayhem is another 4-4 four, four flyer for four but we can also cast it for three if we deal damage to the opponent um that's amazing if we can get a 4-4 four, four flyer with trample for three that's so good that's such good value on turn three um, usually we don't actually get this on turn three just because, A, there's only two of them, um, I, and it's hard to cast, uh, because it costs two blacks. Um, but at the beginning of my upkeep, Spawn of Mayhem deals one damage to each player, and then, that's so, me and the opponent, um, and then if I have ten or less life, put a plus one, plus one counter on Spawn of Mayhem. So if we're getting low in health, this is going to get bigger and bigger, which is really good, um, and it also is going to be hitting our opponent every turn for damage, which... Let me get to this now. Um, we'll trigger our spectacles for Rick's Mighty Reveler, um, which is something we're going to be playing. Not usually as a two drop, we want to be playing this for its spectacle cost for four so we can um, draw more cards. Um, so let me just read it. It's a two cost, two, two, um, and you can play its spectacle cost, which is a red, a black, and two mana. And then when Rick's Mighty Reveler enters the battlefield, discard a card, then draw a card. So sometimes we use this in the early and mid game just to filter our hand if we're struggling to either either if we're flooding out or the or starving for mana, um, we can play this and then filter our hand a little bit to to help us out. 
Um, but if Rick's Mighty Reveler's Spectacle Cost was paid, instead discard your hand, then draw three cards. Of course, we never want to discard several cards out of our hand, but if we don't have any cards in our hand after we play Rick's Mighty Reveler, we're discarding nothing and drawing three cards. So that's amazing. That's really, really good. Sometimes we'll want to go ahead and do this and discard one card, maybe even two if we're flooding out or something like that. Uh, but usually we're going to be wanting to play this when we have nothing left in our hand. We just play this out and then we're refilling our hand effectively. Um, we also are running one Theater of Horrors. Um, it's a three cost enchantment and at the beginning of your upkeep exile the top card of your library. During your turn if an opponent lost life this turn you may play cards exiled with Theater of Horrors. And we can also spend four mana to deal one damage to an opponent or a Planeswalker. Um, so this is really good with Spawn of Mayhem because this deals damage at the beginning of their or of our turn, and so then we can play whatever cards have been exiled with this. Um, one good thing this does, besides basically being an extra draw for us at the beginning of our turn, this protects us from discard, which is really, really uh, prevalent right now with Grixis and Demir decks wanting to play Thought Erasure or Disinformation Campaign or Nicol Bolas or something like that. That's going to discard cards from our hand. This protects us a little bit because these those cards can't be discarded. The only problem is, once a card is exiled under Theater of Horrors, if they manage to destroy Theater of Horrors with a Mortify or something, all those cards stay in exile, and we can't get them back. So that can be a pain, but usually we don't get punished for that. It's usually very helpful. Um, on the smaller end, we are running two Moment of Cravings to protect us from aggro. We need to remove small creatures, and we need to gain a little bit of life. That's all it's there for. Um, we're running three Priest of Forgotten Gods and three Reassembling Skeletons. This helps us because we're, a lot of times we're going to have quite a few creatures on the field and we're going to need to get some more mana, uh, take the opponent's life away, and get rid of some pesky creatures that we're having trouble, like Hexproof creatures, like Carnage Tyrant or Nullhide Ferox um, are hard to deal with, but this helps us um, because it forces them to sacrifice those creatures if we just sack two of our creatures and then we draw a card and gain some mana. So this is really good value. Um, and we're also running two Hired Poisoners and four Footlight Fiends, because Hired Poisoner is a good blocker early on, um, especially against like Mono White Aggro particularly, that's going to be playing like History of Banale or something, we can use a 1-1 blocker to deal with like uh, some Knight tokens and stuff like that. And then we also have Footlight Fiend, which is a good blocker, and this is good value because it gets us an extra damage whenever it dies. Um, what have I missed? Oh, we play Reassembling Skeleton because we want to be using it as a blocker and sacrificing it for Priest of Forgotten Gods, and we want to be able to bring it back because sometimes we can easily run out of cards in our hand, run out of creatures, um, but we can bring this back from the graveyard really easily. Um, and every time it dies, we're also pinging Judith the Scourge Diva to get a damage on something, so this is a really nice combo with Judith. Um, now, we also run two Gruesome Menagerie and two Angrath the Flame Chained. Gruesome Menagerie is kind of an iffy card in this deck, honestly. You may want to sub it out for something else, but I found it to be pretty helpful um, because we run into trouble sometimes. We run out of steam early on. We play play out a couple of these of one drops, two drops, and three drops, and then those get killed, and we don't really have a good way of getting them back, um, and we need bodies on the field. And so later on in the game, Gruesome Menagerie can bring back uh, a full graveyard to the battlefield. Um, we also run two Angrath the Flame Chained, and this is kind of a game winner for us. Usually when we play this, we're going to be taking control of a creature and then attacking with it for the win, um, partly because that's just a really good ability, but if that creature's mana cost is three or less, as it says on Angrath's text there, we sacrifice it at the end of our turn, which is A, removal for their creatures, but also whenever a creature we control dies, Judith the Scourge Diva deals one damage to any target. So that's a very good combo. Um, also, Angrath, just his plus one is good because it's forcing opponent to discard cards and they're losing two life. It's just good. It's just good value. It works. It just works. Um, our mana base is pretty simple. I am running a little bit of, of budgety version because I don't have full shock lands and stuff. So I'm running two Blood Crypts, two Dragon Skull Summits, two Rakdos Guild Gates, seven Mountains, and nine swamps. That's t only 22 lands. Did I just count that right? Yeah, it's only 22 lands, which might seem like not enough, um, considering we are running two or four cards in the five slot and six cards in the four slot. Uh, but it's worked for me so far, partly because we have 
We have ways to get more mana with Priest of Forgotten Gods, and we can play Spawn of Mayhem for its spectacle cost, which is cheaper. Um, so, I think that's about it. Let's uh, let's start playing. Okay, game number one. And we have a, ooh, uh, this is an okay hand. It's not great, but it is, it's fine, it's doable. Um, because we do have card filtering if we need it, and we have a play on turn one and turn two for sure. Probably, I may not play Priest of Forgotten Gods on turn two. It's hard to say, it's pretty vulnerable, so we really want to be playing that slightly later on in the mid-game. But I'm going to keep this hand, it's not bad. And now let's see what we're up against. Dradoy. Okay, uh, we picked up a Judith, which is very good, so... I'm probably gonna go ahead and play the Priest of Forgotten Gods on turn two. Okay, looks like black white uh, aggro. Orzhov aggro. Hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and attack. I think I go ahead and play this now. I may have wanted to to just play two more Footlight Fiends and then make them just uh, strike force with Judith, but I also like having Priest of Forgotten Gods out there because it's a little more threatening. Yeah, it's a nice it's a nice blocker. Okay, Dragon Skull Summit, and let's go with Judith. The one unfortunate thing about Priest of Forgotten Gods is that she's re it's really hard to actually use her ability on turn 3 because it has to be sacking two other creatures and I'm not going to want to sacrifice Judith the Scourge Diva here. Um, so that's a bit lame. I think I go ahead and pass probably. I don't think I attack here. Um, though the, the problem is now they're going to have three creatures at the beginning of combat on their turn and I could have put the pressure on a little bit. But having Footlight Fiend up does um, prevent them from probably attacking in um, really aggressively. Okay, Call to the Feast. Uh, that's a lot of that's a lot of tokens. So what we have to watch out for is them gaining a bunch of life uh, with all these tokens. Okay, so we're drawing a lot of lands. I think I probably play all these Footlight Fiends. I'm going to attack with one Footlight Fiend, kind of see where things go. They may not block, but they're blocking. That's fine. Okay, but here's the thing. If I sacrifice two Footlight Fiends, I have four damage to distribute, and they don't gain any life. I think that's what I do. I just sacrifice. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yes. Target him. And I'm going to be able to kill all of his tokens and his Leon and Vanguard. This is great. So we do that. Then that. Then that. Then that. Boom. Boom. Boom, boom, boom. And then the Priestess, Priest of Forgotten Gods forces sack the Leon and Vanguard. And the opponent concedes! Oh, that's so brutal. That's horrible. Oh, it's hilarious. Uh, they must not have had anything going on in their hand. Ooh. Okay, sorry. Game. We're going into game two here. Um, I don't think I can keep this hand. This is not a good hand. Uh, we have all mountains. And kind of a heavy hand. So, ugh, I don't like this either, but I'm going to keep it. I'm going to keep it, because even though it's bad. And I hate to do this. I hate to do this. I kind of want to put Theater of Horrors on the bottom. Theater of Horrors is really good. But if we have Midnight Reaper, we don't need this as much. So I think I'm going to actually put it on the bottom just to make sure I can draw lands early. Ooh, excuse me. Sweet. S still no land. Uh, I guess that's okay. Looks like we're up against Mono Blue, which can be dangerous if we don't get rolling pretty quickly. Oh, no. So, uh, is it? 
It's gonna be, is it drakes or is it spells or something like that? Okay, so we play Reassembling Skeleton. Uh, this is not an amazing start for us by any means, not at all. Uh, big question though becomes, so on turn three, yeah, this is Phoenix's. That's just dandy. Lava Coil, and then they're gonna play something else. Nope, okay. Ooh, okay, Rekindling Phoenix is gonna be really, really good for us as a blocker for their Arclight Phoenixes. Um, but I think we, we go ahead and play Legion Warboss now before we play a Midnight Reaper. Just start pinging them for damage and put up a little bit of a, put up a little aggressive front. And they're probably not gonna want to attack with Goblin Electromancer because they really need Goblin Electromancer to keep this deck moving. It looks like they're gonna be able to get their Rekindling Phoenix this turn. Not Rekindling Phoenix, the Arclight Phoenix. And they've got two in there. Oh geez, yep, there it goes, there they go. Nice, oh geez. Okay, so they're gonna be attacking with two, three, two flyers this turn. It's freaking sick. So we are gonna take a little bit of damage here. <laughs> um, okay, so we really need to top deck a mountain here. Blood Crypt will work. I think we shock this in. Play this. And they are not going to block with their Goblin Electromancer, I don't think. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to attack with all of these. And then tour that because I don't think they use a Goblin... Oh, they are blocking the Legion Warboss, which is not the end of the world for us. That's good to get him out of the way. Um... Because if they attack with their Arclight Phoenixes, they're going to have a harder time bringing them back out of the graveyard if they don't have uh, their instants and sorceries costing one less to cast. So this is actually kind of nice. Angry Tofu. You're making me angry, dude. That was an amazing turn three play. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I mean, I block block one of these puppies. Uh, this is a bit risky. They may shock. They may be shocking. I mean, it's not risky. I have to do it, or I'm gonna lose. They may shock the Rekindling Phoenix's token. Um, in which case, we're just we're just Gonzo. This might be bad news. Yep, there it goes. Okay. Um, I think we're probably just toast at this point. They got a really nice start, and. There's not a, yeah, we're just dead, I think. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and play the Midnight Reaper and see what next turn, what happens next turn. It's possible they won't be able to get back their Arclight Phoenix this turn, but they have five mana, so I don't see how they couldn't. And if, they, if they're able to shock me and get their Arclight Phoenix back, it's over. Tormenting voice, and then okay, so they got us. Their sixth land. Ah. And there's the shock, and here is the kill. Okay, I'm gonna let them do their damage and kill me. Instead of conceding, I'll be a good sport. Ah, let them have their satisfaction. Now, that was a very well played, like, couple of first turns for that opponent. That was really good. Um, usually you don't see, um, I, I usually don't see Arclight Phoenix decks performing that efficiently. Um, but they got it. They got their combo moving, and they were able to discard two Arclight Phoenixes right away. And so that was that was boo boo, man, boo boo. I guess it was turn four. I guess I think it was turn four that they got both their Arclight Phoenixes back from the graveyard. 
Okay, game number three. <laughs> uh... Okay, we only have two lands, and we don't have a turn one play because Dragon Skull Summon's gonna come in tapped. I think I'd mulligan this. I think I mulligan it. Ah, uh, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. Because we do have we do have good pieces. I think I'm gonna keep this. It's a bit risky to keep a two lane hand. I know, I know. But I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. Okay. Um yeah, I'm gonna play Priest of Forgotten Gods, and then next turn, if I don't draw another land, I can even if I do draw another land, I can play Footlight Fiend and Hired Poisoner. And then sack them to kill Dryad Greenseeker. Okay. We're gonna do this. I need the draw. I need the draw. The the biggest problem here is that No, I don't think I, I don't think I do it yet. Um I need another land badly. We're getting mana screwed right now. Um, and that's why I want to draw a card. But I also don't want to waste the two black mana that this produces if I don't have anything to spend it on. If I were to draw another land, I could play Midnight Reaper or Judith. But I don't want to risk that when I can wait and draw on my next turn and see what it's going to be. Sapperling Migration, not bad. Go to my turn. Legion, War Boss. That's a bummer. Okay, I'm actually gonna... I'm gonna go to combat. I'm gonna attack with both of these. See if they block. They may just decide to take the damage. And then we give them the damage, and then we sacrifice them. Ooh, yeah, target you. And sack you too. And we should be able to play Rekindling Phoenix right here. Um, we'll go ahead and kill one of the saplings, and they're going to probably sack the other sapperling. Keep their green seeker alive. <laughs> okay, uh, I guess we play, we go ahead and play Rekindling Phoenix now. This is the best value on this turn. And we still are not drawing lands. This is terrible. Oh, awesome. Yep. I love that, man. I love that. Oh, jeez. Hey, hey. There's our third land. Okay, I'm going to play Legion War Boss. We'll be a little bit aggressive. So this is this next turn is going to be really big for us, assuming they don't have a Braska's Contempt. Well, okay, that was dumb of you because you're contempting my Legion War Boss, which I can just sacrifice. Um, I don't like that. Yeah, that was a mistake by the opponent for sure. Um, but a possibility that I knew was coming. Possibly that I knew was a possibility. No. Okay, so we can hit him for two with the Priest of Forgotten Gods this turn, which is lame. That's not exactly what we want to be doing, but our opponent is running lots of removal, apparently. Okay. Here we go. Legion War Boss. Alright, so we'll take out one of their saplings here, or they just concede. Okay, um, I don't know what this deck was. <laughs> I don't know what they were doing. They, they're done now, though. We're, we're done. We're moving on. Alrighty, game number four. Game number four. I want to I want to actually get to showcase this deck really well, and this might be the the match for it. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna keep this hand. 
The only problem we might run into is not having the lands to cast Rekindling Phoenix later, but that's okay. Um, we'll play Footlight Fiend first, because it has our most, the most damage potential. And then turn two, we'll probably end up playing Hired Poisoner unless we draw like a Reassembling, reassembling Skeleton or something. Um, but basically, I keep any hand that has a Judith in it, and there's the other mountain we need. Okay, we're looking at Orzhov so far. This might be like a like an afterlife tech deck. Tech decks. Skateboards for your fingers. That's what those were, right? Tech decks? Okay. Abzan. And here we go. Swinging in hot, baby. So we can hit for four right now. Um, I'm a little worried about a Cry of the Carnarium here, but I don't think an Abzan deck would run that. There's a Kaya, so she probably, what, exiles one of these guys? Probably exiles a Footlight Fiend. Yep. <laughs> okay, um, so I could play Legion Warboss and go ahead and get another attacker down, or I could just play Rekindling Phoenix. I think I I play the Rekindling Phoenix, so I'm gonna attack, um, kill their Kaya and deal two damage, and then play Rekindling Phoenix. I don't think the opponent's gonna put up much of a fight here, unless they have a Vraska's Contempt to get rid of the Rekindling Phoenix. They're gonna have a tough time. Here it comes, yeah, yeah, Vraska's Contempt. Okay, not the end of the world. It's not the end of the world. Okay, we have. Two Angraths in our hand and not enough mana to cast it. That's fine though, because we're gonna deal another six damage this turn. As I said, okay, well, that's three damage to the opponent. So they're down to four. I'm just praying that I can top deck a land here. What? What? Okay, this is actually very bad. We're kind of petering out now, and they're picking up steam. So it looks like they're playing some kind of control. Uh, four, co four color control? That's because he kept... How do you... That's lame. Okay, treasure map. Can I please, can I please just get a land? The good news is, they've used two Vraska's Contempt, so it's unlikely that they're gonna have another one. Um, so they're probably gonna kill the Midnight Reaper, which will allow me to draw another card, and hopefully, I'll get to top deck a land so I can deal damage to them with Angrath. Okay, what is this deck I'm up against? Is this, this looks like five color or something. Maybe it's not five color, but, okay, Kai's Wrath. <laughs> Again, so I take a damage. Yes, and there's a mountain. And a Legion Warboss, but I go ahead, I'm gonna play Angrath, and then for some discard. I wouldn't be surprised if they scooped here, it looks like they don't have much. Since they've already used two Vraska's Contempt, I doubt they have a way to deal with Angrath on their turn. There goes, oh, a Vraska Relic Seeker? That's so sad. Muldrotha the Grave type. Well, okay. Good game because we just take their Muldratha. Your crew for my and then <laughs> we kill them. I think they didn't realize that I could do that. But, but yeah, I can just steal your creatures with Angrath. That's what he does. Oh, yes, baby. Yes. Alright, hitting up game five here, I believe. Am I counting right? I think I am counting right. These have been quick games, so I'm, I'm a little. A little um, I don't know what's going on. Um, okay. Again with the two lands. This may be, this may be a problem with the deck. We need to up the land count a little bit. Um, and we go first. So we're not on the draw. So I may have to mulligan this to make sure we can hit. Uh, so not well. On turn two, I will have Rick's Mighty Reveler to discard this gruesome menagerie. Probably and draw another another card. So I'm gonna keep this. It's it's very risky. I know it's very risky, but I'm gonna do it.
Okay, it looks like mono blue, which is mean, to say the least. Um, yeah, I go ahead and play Rick's Mighty Reveler. Discard Gruesome Menagerie, and we get another Judith. That's not great. Well, if nothing else, we will be able to play Footlight Fiend next turn. Sick. Okay, I mean, I can't use Rick's Mighty Reveler as a blocker, so I'm gonna go ahead and attack. And then I can play Footlight Fiend. If I'd had a land, I would have been able to play Spawn of Mayhem that turn, and that would have been huge. Huge, huge, huge. Getting a 4-4 a blocker against... Flying blocker against Mono Blue is um, pretty, pretty great. So I'm hoping for... There it is. Okay. So I'm going to... I'm going to go ahead and attack with both of these. See if a Merfolk Trickster comes out. No Merfolk Trickster. And it's a bit risky. There could be a... Uh, could be a Wizard Retort coming here. But no. So... Oh, yes. Ah, Tempest Gen is now a 4-4 Flyer as well. But they can't very well attack. So... Now what do they do? And we can play Judith next turn. Oh, they are attacking. Okay. But they can't adapt uh, Terramander. I guess they're just trying to get in damage. That was very weird. I don't. I did not understand that play. Okay, yeah, I think I go ahead and play Judith. Because then I can attack with Rick's Mahdi and Footlight Fiend. But I think I keep Spawn of Mayhem up for the Tempest Gen. But if I attack with Footlight Fiend and he blocks with Tempest Gen... Oh, I can still kill Tempest Gen if he does that. He's blocking Rick's Mighty Reveler. I do this. They probably sack their Sy Siren Storm Tamer to save the Tempest Gen here. If I had to guess. So I think that, that may have been a miscalculation by the opponent. Um, Astataroth. So now this is a 5-4, and they've got another Tempest Gen. And a Terramander. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. I'm, I'm at odds about whether to block this or not. Because if I take the damage, I'm going to go to 9, and then I'll put a token on Spawn of Mayhem next turn. And then I'm in a, I'm in a really good position to win at that point. Dang, this is tough. This is a tough choice. I think I don't block. I think I want to play this aggressive and kind of see how it goes. If I pick up a land, now we picked up a Rekindling Phoenix, which is, that's okay, it's not the end of the world. Now, if I attack with everyone, do I win? I don't think so. This is... I'm in a very precarious position right now. I'm in a precarious position... Another Tempest Gen, you say? Wow! How do you draw three Tempest Gens? Why did he pass? Why? Okay. Um. I think I win now. I think I just win. I my opponent messed up. I think, because now I have Spawn of Mayhem to attack. Um. And my creatures are gonna die, but he, yeah, I'm pretty sure I win. So let's let's go attack. I'm going to give you a. No, I don't want to give you a counter. Yeah, he concedes. 
Wow. <laughs> what a what an interesting game. My opponent just messed up, I think. I think if he if he'd attacked, I would have been forced to have block with the spawn of mayhem, and that would have taken away my win potential there. Though I may have still been able to win after that. Regardless. Anyway, that's gonna be it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know in the comments what you thought of this deck. Um, give me suggestions, things you think you think I should change, ways to make it better. Um, also, yeah, also if you have suggestions for decks you want to see me play, also put those in the comments. And if you enjoyed this, drop a like on it and subscribe to see more. And I think that's everything that I'm supposed to say as a, as a cool YouTuber guy. Have a good one, everybody.